On February 7, 2023, a photo from Gabby Petito's phone has been released by the Utah attorneys representing Gabby's parents. Gabby has cuts and smeared blood on her face, they write. The family has filed a lawsuit against the Moab police claiming Gabby's injuries were ignored by officers. Gabby's family deserves justice. Gabrielle Venora Petito was born on March 19, 1999 in Long Island, New York. Long Island is about 35 minutes outside of New York City. Gabby's biological parents are Joe Petito and Nicole Schmidt. Although Joe and Nicole never married and separated after Gabby's birth, they remained a close-knit family that grew on both sides and shared a lot of love and memories. By the time Gabby was three, she had adopted two other parental figures in her life. Both her parents married in 2005. Her step-parents are Jim and Tara. Gabby graduated high school at Bayport Blue Point in 2017. After high school, she worked various jobs, including at a grocery store and even a cafe, and became a nutritionist before the pandemic in 2020. Joe Petito is a sales supervisor and works for Time Warner Cable. And Jim, Gabby's stepfather, has been a career and volunteer firefighter for over 20 years. By August 2021, Gabby would launch her new YouTube channel and begin her journey as an online vlogger and content creator, which was the perfect profession to invest in considering it allowed Gabby to be creative and express her artistic side and let her free spirit run wild as this allowed her to travel as well as create. Adventure and freedom are both environments Gabby thrives in and she accomplished plenty of adventures before her light was unfairly snuffed out. This is the inspiring yet also tragic story of Gabby Petito. You know, I was 20 years old when Gabby was born. She saved my life. I was going the wrong way in life. You know, made me the person I am today. From a little girl, all right, so she was always artistic, always. I mean, from the start. So when she was about nine, uh, I, think, I think she was nine, we were painting her rooms and stuff like that. We were redoing her room in my house. And she had this idea of, of, of taking, painting the walls purple, like a darker purple, and then we got this bright fluorescent pink, you know, in, in a can, and we put rubber gloves on, and we put our hands in the can, and we wung it at all four walls, all over the place, so the walls were almost covered. You know, like she was always into art, she was always into, you know, experiences, and, and having fun, and just living life, and, you know, um, up until the day that we lost her. I, I can't express enough how much, how relaxed and cool she is, you know, and and she's always trying to look at the bright, the brighter side of things, you know. You can't fault someone for that. You know, there's so much negativity in the world, and you turn to this beautiful soul, and she just sees the beauty in it. Like you don't see people like that a lot. I, it's kind of probably one of the reasons she's got so much attention, is because people know that she sees the beauty in everyone and everything, and that's awesome. She's amazing. She's she's the coolest chick you'll ever meet. I'm a protective father. If my daughter cries, I'm gonna fix the problem. You know what I mean? That's that's how I am. I don't like to see that. that she was happy, genuinely happy. She's like, yeah, come on, let me show you this. She'd want to take you. Let's go. Jump in the car. Let's 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 just go for a ride. We'll check it out. We'll go to the beach. Um, just just listen to the ocean. Look at the waves. Look at the sand. Watch the sunrise. Watch the sunset. She did a lot. She was very busy. She loved her friends. She was a beautiful artist, brilliant artist, um, just so talented. She has five siblings. They fought growing up, but they, they uh, got closer as, uh, like my son is, is 18, and they got very close. Um, and they even went camping together before they left for this trip. Blue eyes, blonde hair. She typically wore very uh, modest, Casual outfits, uh, t-shirts, shorts, um, sandals, flip-flops, things like that. Um, 
I like to have her hair in a ponytail and sunglasses. Um, she's a beautiful girl. I think she was just the type of person that was free. She went and did what the day took her, you know. She, uh, she didn't have a plan. She's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful soul inside and out. She's uh, incredibly artistic, creative, loving, caring, uh, free-spirited, um, just wonder wonderful soul. She, she enjoys life. Beautiful. She was creative, artistic, talented, um, a genuine person, uh, and we all loved her so much. Everybody sees the pictures of her out there as an adult, but when I close my eyes and I think of her, I still remember a little blonde hair, bright blue eyed, a uh, little girl with her hair up in, you know, ponytails and always smiling no matter what. I have to think of like a good Mr. Hero. I think of like a good Hero. But what's like the first thing that comes to mind when you do When I think about Hesby? Gabby's childhood friend Nikki describes Gabby as Petito is sweet, free spirited, and selfless. There's always been a warmth about her. When people meet her, they instantly love her. Um, uh, roughly two years ago, um, I got a message on a Bumble from her friends, and it, uh, was, uh, you seem so cool, I want to be your friend, can we be friends? And I was like, of course, and from there we started hanging out every day, and it's kind of weird to say I met her on Bumble for Friends, people always laughed at us for that, uh, but hey, glad she came into my life. Oh, she's hilarious. And she always made me laugh, always. And she's easygoing. She's like, hey, I love nature. Hey, camping, why not? Oh my God. She's gorgeous. I've always described her as this light, you know? She's just, she'll do everything to bring the light out in you. And if she can't, she'll give you some of hers. In July 2020, Gabby and Brian both announced their engagement on Instagram. This is Gabby's post on that day. Here's a picture from our first date because I have so much love for you. Brian asked me to marry him and I said yes. You make life feel unreal and every day is such a dream with you. Brian's post on his Instagram states, My biggest fear is that one day I'll wake up and it will all have been a dream. Because that is what every second has felt like since the moment we found each other. Till death do us part or until I wake up, I'm so happy the answer was yes. Love you, honey. Brian was always respectful. You know, I can't say he wasn't. Yeah, so about two and a half years, they've known each other since high school. I've met him a bunch of times. You know, um, I've never liked any of Gabby's boyfriends, let's be real. I've never actually called one of her boyfriends by their real name, ever, ever. I've always made up, na I've always made up names for them, to be honest with you. Use the, the female version of the, of the, the boyfriend's names, uh -huh. just, to, just to intimidate them a little bit. As the years progressed, I think she prepared them from when they, <laughs> when they met me. There's no red flags that stuck out, nothing that popped in my head that, listen, this boy is, you know, it's not a good boy. Listen, at the end of the day, if my daughter's gonna be happy and she loves you and you love her, which is what I saw, I'm okay. Yeah, that's 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 all I care about, and, you know, and that's it, my daughter's happy. It happened pretty quickly. He was very polite and quiet. 
every time he would come over, he was polite. You know, he, he talked with our other other children as well. You know, they, they got to know him and they liked him, so. He'd draw them pictures and stuff. He would read books to my little one at night before bed. So he just seemed like a nice guy. Nikki said Gabby seemed happy in her relationship with Brian. So she added that she thought it was strange the pair got engaged so quickly. She added that the proposal was a surprise for Gabby, but that she was excited and happy about it. The couple had begun to think about wedding plans and asked Nikki's cousin Stephen to photograph the event. Nikki wasn't friends with Brian in high school herself, but did know some people who knew him and described him as quiet and nice. He seemed like such a nice couple, but a lot of couples look nice on Instagram. I was concerned with them spending that much time together because when I was last seeing them and everything, they were rocky. I feel like Brian never thought that he was going to be enough, and obviously he sees the beauty in Gabby. She's gorgeous, and jealousy can turn into rage. And I got this stuff for you, for me, for you. Yeah, well, we were supposed to go line dancing. It was ladies' night. And her drive is about 30 minutes to me. And halfway there, she realized her uh, ID was missing. And so it caused a really big argument because Brian just didn't want her to go out. And it was a jealousy issue. And, um... It caused a huge argument between them, and she came over and cried and just talked to me about what happened and told me all that she was comfortable telling me. Did you feel that their relationship was getting more problematic? I do I believe that their relationship, as they kept going on, was getting a little, well, yeah, problematic. I mean, it just seemed like there was more and more arguments, and everything she did, I feel like, you know, he thought was wrong, and... She's a beautiful, free spirit, just wanting to take a journey and have fun while she's young. She knew she wanted a van. They uh, worked and saved up for it. They bought the van, they converted it. I love the van. And we supported her on that. Just wanted to have fun on a, a nice cross-country road trip. Camping, hiking, seeing the country. As a mom, I had concerns for my daughter going on a road trip in general, but um, I felt safe. They were together. They had a plan. They had an itinerary. And um, we were excited for them. Everybody wanted to do what they were doing. We hugged. We gave them some money to, you know, if they needed it, because they're kids, you know. Um, they were excited about the trip. They left on July 2nd from New York. Um, the trip was supposed to end in October in Portland, Oregon. But she took, uh, we leased her a Nissan Sentra. They did a cross-country trip to California and San Francisco, stopping at a bunch of stops and stuff like that. It was, uh, it, she had a great time. So it's not even like this is their first time doing something like that. I had, I had concerns, I mean, come on, a parent has concerns, you know, especially because it's going to be a few months, let's be real. But nothing, nothing indicate we'd be here. She's 22. This is not a 14-year-old girl, you know, going on a school trip here. You know, she's an adult, and she's got to make her decisions. So we respected her decisions. We tried to, all of us, tried to best prepare her. And she's, she knew what she was doing. She, this is not like she decided, to, you know, yesterday that she's going on a three-month trip here, you know. She planned this for a while, for like a year and a half, and that made me feel more confident. July 2nd, Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie set out on their road trip from Blue Point, New York in Suffolk County on eastern Long Island. July 5th, the couple stopped at Kansas Monument Rocks. July 8th, their next stop was Colorado Springs. July 10th, Petito updated her Instagram with photos of her walking at the Grand Sand Dunes National Park. July 16th, Gabby is smiling in a photo from the couple's next stop at Zion National Park. 
July 20th, Gabby informed her Instagram followers that they were at Cedar Breaks. July 21st, the next stop was Bryce Canyon National Park. July 26th, Gabby posted a photo relaxing in a tub at Mystic Hot Springs. July 30th, the couple stopped at Canyonlands National Park, Mesa Arc. August 12th, the couple took a hike at Arches National Park. August 13th, Landry posted an Instagram photo from their next destination at Moab, Utah. August 21st, Gabby's father orders a meal for the couple via Uber Eats after they lose Wi-Fi connectivity and a power outage in Salt Lake City, Utah. August 24th, the couple was seen checking out of a hotel in Salt Lake City. August 25th, Gabby's family spoke to her for the last time over the phone and she said she was in Grand Teton National Park. August 27th, and 30th, Gabby's mom, Nicole Schmidt, had a text exchange with who she thought was Gabby, but didn't hear from her over the phone to confirm. By September 1st, Brian returned to the couple's home in Northport, Florida without Gabby. This is around the 23rd and, um, or the 24th, I can't recall, but um, she was having a great time. She said she was headed up to uh, Wyoming. You don't think anything of it, you know, but then come the, you know, the first, the second, third, the fourth, the fifth, you're not hearing from her. All right, because you, you know, you're camping, there's not a lot of service, I'll hear from her in a couple of days. And then, you know, you let two two days more go by, now you start calling people and stuff like that. You're like, all right, maybe, you know, whatever. And then we started, to, we could, we tried on the 10th to do, like I said, the, the missing person, we finally got it in on the 11th. You, you know what I mean? So, like, it just became a, too much. First of all, you, you know, you, you came home without it. Then you had the van for 10 days in your driveway. So now I got, what happened with the van? Did you clean it? Did your parents help you clean it? Did they, did they help cover up crime? You know, after the fact, I want to know. Like, I got these questions. You know, like, did, did you, you, did, you know, you stole a car over, over um, across how many states? You know, they, can, you, can you be arrested for that? Like, I got a lot of questions. Until I get my daughter back, I don't give a damn about the questions. I gotta get my baby girl back. But um, her brother is, her two older, oldest brothers are, um, they're younger than her, but they're the older brothers, but she's, they're um, not doing well. who disappeared on a cross-country adventure. Well, it's now become a national story, and yeah. I think that's good because the more attention you get on it, the more likely we are to be able to find her. An army of citizen sleuths is pouring over online comments Gabby supposedly made before she disappeared, and they're raising questions about whether Gabby wrote them at all. One sleuth writes, something very off with the last four or five posts. They are very long and seem to ramble. We asked Gabby's mom, Nicole, who she believes wrote the text she received from Gabby's phone. Was it Gabby or was it really her fiance, Brian Laundry? I don't want to comment on that. Gabby and Laundry set out on their cross country journey on July 2nd from Gabby's family home on Long Island. But when Laundry returned to his home in Northport, Florida, Gabby was not with him. Obviously, some of the circumstances are. Uh, odd. What makes the circumstances of this case odd to you? Anytime you have uh, someone missing, uh, someone who's in pretty good constant contact with their family, they stop having that contact, their vehicle shows up, you know, a thousand or more miles away, uh, back here at home, and they're nowhere to be found. I think most people would find that very odd. Saturday night, police towed the camper from Laundry's parents' home searching for evidence. From her video journal, Gabby seemed to be enjoying her life on the road in the camper she had fixed up. I'm going to make some yogurt. A guitar hangs on one side. There's even flowers to brighten it up. They converted the van together, um, which was awesome. It was an awesome van. It's uh, an important part of this investigation. When you picked up the van, was there an attempt to speak to Brian or his family? Yes, there was. And we were uh, informed by the family to speak uh, with their attorney. We were provided a name and phone number, um, and we've done that. 
Speaking out for the first time, Brian Laundrie's family lawyer tells Inside Edition, This is understandably an extremely difficult time for both the Petito family and the Laundrie family. It is our understanding that a search has been organized in or near Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. On behalf of the Laundrie family, it is our hope that the search for Miss Petito is successful and that Miss Petito is reunited with her family. Gabby's father, Joseph, had an angry reaction. That statement was just a really, really cold, bad statement. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's really hard to understand. Uh, we were told to, uh, well, the law enforcement was told to speak through the attorney, and the attorney is stating that they're remaining in the background. They're not talking, so we're not getting any information. <laughs> you know, it's, it's incredibly frustrating, incredibly frustrating. And we, we just want, want them, you know, to speak up and, and help us. That's all we're asking. All alone, they say he had referred to her as the love of his life. What we need is to bring Gabby home and find her. Um, so please, everyone, if you can look at the picture, memorize her face, and just keep a lookout. And let us know if you see anything. We went there last night. Staff wouldn't speak to us on camera, but they did say the FBI and police officers have visited the hotel recently. They also tell us Gabby stayed there for more than a day. And this morning, the search for Gabby is now focused on Wyoming. That's where she and Brian reportedly were when she last spoke to her mother. Her stepfather is there now and spoke to Fox News about the efforts to find Gabby. Now, you know, the police are doing everything they can and that's that's uh all we can rely on right now is that all these law enforcement agencies are working together uh collectively and they are doing their best to uh, to find out what happened where she is we are and this morning we're also learning more about an interaction gabby and brian laundry had with moab police a police report indicates it happened on august 12th uh we drove by and the gentleman was slapping the girl who's slapping her yes a witness told cops, I heard her say, why do you have to be so mean? Something definitely didn't seem right. It was as if the guy was trying to leave her. Bad mood, I've just been really stressed. I had so much work I was doing on my computer this morning. So I've just been really stressed and I didn't really believe that I could do any of it. Just kind of been like a, I don't know, he's like in, down there. I don't know, we didn't invite him all morning and... <laughs> And he wouldn't let me in the car before. And Why then, wouldn't he let you in the car? Because <laughs> you had OCD? He told me I needed to calm down. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm perfectly calm about all the time. And he really stresses me out. And I just. And this is a rough morning. But she didn't have manic issues or mental instability or anything like that. It sounds like they were having an argument because he didn't believe in her that she could get this done. Were you aware that they had an encounter with the police on August 12th? I wasn't, and that's not something you're going to tell your dad. When did you find out about it, and how did you find out about it? Through the media. That's why it's hard for me to bring myself to watch the whole thing, because when I see my daughter like that, it's just, it's hard to handle it. I, I... Yeah? Is there something on your cheek here? Looks like, did, did you get, did you get hit in the face? Um, kind of looks like something like hitting you in the face. And then over on your arm, shoulder, right here. That's new, huh? Just have a new mark? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Can I see the other side of your face? So, what happened here and here? Um, I, I'm not sure it was a... I was trying to get in the back of the car and the backpack got me back. So, the backpack got you? So, there's two people that came to us and told us that they saw him hit you. There's two people saying that they saw him punch you. We just independent witnesses by Moonflower. Well, to be honest, I definitely hit him first. Uh, Where'd you hit him? I slapped him. You, you slapped him first? And then what, just on his face? He just kind of shut up. How many times did you slap Pablo him? Pablo Romeo and the uh, album. Just a couple. And then what, and his reaction was to do what? Grab him. He just grabbed you? Yeah. Did he... Did he hit you though? I mean, I mean, it's okay if you're saying you hit him, and then I, and I understand if he hit you, but we want to know the truth if he actually hit you. Because you know. I guess, yeah, but I him first. Where did he hit you? Don't, don't worry, just well, be he honest. He like has my face, like, I guess. Uh -huh. um, he didn't like hit me in the face, like he didn't like punch me in the face or anything. Did he slap but, your face or what? 
Well, like, he, like, grabs me, like, with his nail, and I guess that's why it was, I definitely have a cut right here, like, it's healing. Yeah. Like, I shouldn't burn. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, has he been drinking? No, we don't drink. Okay. What was up with his driving? I just also said he hit a curb. I, I, I... <laughs> While you're driving? Well, he was driving. While he was driving, you were hitting him? Not a lot, but yeah. So that was distracting him while he's driving? Are you not, not only for like a second, not only because I saw him, I saw the like, come on, and I like kind of like, <laughs> Did you already tell him all this? I didn't get that far into okay, it. She so was. But is there a way to not do anything on something like this? I mean, it's so minor. It's hard to say, right? Mm -hmm. In no way, shape, or form that I can perceive does what happened here, a little slap fight between fiancés who love each other want to be together. Can I perceive that this is going to digress into the situation where he's going to be a battered man? Right. But then again, I don't have a crystal ball. West. On August 12th, Gabby posted Instagram pictures from Arches National Park in Moab, Utah. That same day, Eight on Your Side has learned, Moab City Police responded to witness report of a physical altercation involving the couple. The officers in the police report write, they decide the fight didn't rise to the level of domestic assault as much as that of a mental health crisis. Police recommended they spend the night apart, but Tito stay with the van and police help Laundry get a hotel room at Seacaven Family Crisis Center. Nine days later on August 21st, Joseph Petito says he had his last FaceTime call with his daughter. He says he helped order her pizza in Salt Lake City. There were no red flags that popped out. You know, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to rack my brain Monday morning quarterbacking, you know what I mean? And still nothing's popping to my head. Petito's mother, Nicole Schmidt, says she last spoke with her daughter on August 25th while she was near Grand Teton National Park. Though I wasn't getting responses, I believe she was in a place with no service. Um... It took, it, you know, it was like day eight, nine that I really became concerned and figured she couldn't be off the grid for that long. Police say laundry returned to Northport on September 1st. Saturday, September 11th, concerned family members reported Gabby missing to Suffolk County Police in New York. That night, police recovered the van at Laundrie's parents' home in Northport. Four days later, still no sign of Petito, and police have named Laundrie a person of interest in her disappearance. So, we are right outside Capitol Reef right now in a uh, free dispersed camp spot. Then, the couple that posts nearly every day goes off the grid for 13 days. August 12th is a key date in the timeline. Two things happen. Gabby posts on Instagram referencing a calm Monday morning hike in Arches National Park. But August 12th is a Thursday. The post could signal that they've been there the entire week. The couple also gets into a fight in Moab, Utah. Police are called and body camera video shows Gabby in tears. Suddenly, I have really bad OCD. She just gets worked up sometimes, and I try and really distance myself from her. Laundry tells police that traveling together has created an emotional strain between them. The couple is separated for the night. Petito in the van, Laundry, goes to a hotel. No charges are filed. Brian is back on Instagram the next day, August 13th, with a lengthy post about destructive economic practices and living with less. It's his last post. Five more days of silence. Then, on August 19th, an eight-minute YouTube video about Gabby and Brian's cross-country trip is posted to their account, Nomadic Static. And they're kind of like in the desert. <laughs> they a few trees. <laughs> then, Gabby posts on Instagram, but something is different. It is her first post of the trip without a location. Gabby's father, Joe Petito, FaceTimes with his daughter two days later on August 21st. She says she's in Salt Lake City and her dad notices no red flags. August 25th, Gabby's final Instagram post. No location, just this caption, Happy Halloween. That day is also the last day Gabby's family says they heard from her. A phone call saying that she was in Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. Five days later, August 30th, a text from Gabby's phone to her mother. No service in Yosemite. Two days later, September 1st, Brian Laundry returns to his parents' home in Northport, Florida, in the van. A 40-hour drive from Yosemite. Gabby 
is not with him. Her family reports her missing September 11th. I know where Brian's at. But just 24 hours later, the situation changed dramatically. Right now, currently, I, I don't know where he's at right now. Um, you know, he could be anywhere. I don't know. We are now learning Brian flew home to Florida five days after the encounter with the couple uh, that they had with the police in Moab, Utah. Margie's attorney says his client flew from Salt Lake City to Tampa on August 17th. He then flew back to Salt Lake on August 23rd. His attorney says Laundrie went home to get some items and close out a storage unit. Laundrie was last seen three weeks ago. Also, we called the mom, we called the dad, we called the sister, we called every number we could find. And we got no phone calls were picked up, no text messages were returned. So we, we texted them. Have you seen our kids? You know, we haven't heard from them you know, in a while. Um, we're getting really nervous and we're, we're about to call the police. And you think when someone says they're about to call the police to find your missing kid, you would return a phone call? I mean, that's just what logic would dictate for normal people. And you don't get any response? I mean, that just makes it more and more concerning, doesn't it? We were working on her website. You know, she was telling me about the trip, where she was going, and you know, all this other stuff. She, you know, said, "Listen, I'll, I'm going to have some bad reception, you know, in certain spots, so I'll call you when I can." You know, I let mom know I'm going to be calling her. All right, cool. You know, and then we we're working on her website and trying to. She had some problems um, making the email address work. You know, for Nomadic Static that she was doing. So I'm not a techie guy. But I, you know, I, I sat down at my uh, computer and we YouTubed it and we figured it out together. You know, I sent her some food through my Domino's app and we were just laughing, having a good time, you know, trying to make it work. It was frustrating off the start when we couldn't get the email to work, but we got it. The last thing I said to her, my very, my very last sentence was, I love you. And her last sentence to me was, I love you too. Two people went on a trip, one person returned. And that person that returned isn't providing us any information. Where's Gabby? Where's Gabby? Where's Gabby? Brian, we're out of here. I immediately just, where is she? Where is Gabby? Where is she? Over and over again. I mean, I immediately made like a collage of all of our photos for a TikTok and posted the information. I rushed back to the computer, and lo and behold, Gabby's van was on our footage. Okay, I have a theory. I absolutely think the amazing community on social media came together and found Gabby. One million percent. It was social media. The FBI announcing a medical examiner says the body found in Wyoming was indeed that of Gabby Petito, the coroner calling her death a homicide. Police search warrant. FBI agents descended on the Florida home of 23-year-old Brian Laundrie. They were inside for nearly six hours, questioning his parents and collecting evidence. A massive search. More than 50 officers and FBI agents combing a 24,000-acre park near Sarasota, Florida, looking for Brian Laundrie, who hasn't been seen since the 14th, according to his parents, and is a person of interest in the death of Gabby Petito. Uh, with assistance from the FBI, the Teton County Coroner Office is following the following verdict in the death of Gabrielle Lenora Petito. We hereby find the cause and manner of death to be the cause death by strangulation and manner is homicide. It was just something, you know, deep down that I knew she was there, you know, and just going off the information that we had, we felt that somebody had to be there, and uh, I said right away that that I would I would go, and we felt we needed to put our family out there so we could show that we're, we're here trying to do what we can. Do the scenarios in your head because we don't have the answers. You know, as I play the last moments of what I perceive what they would be, it makes it even worse. When they were out and they started their grid search of the area that she was eventually found in, they had to call the search off at the end of the day because of the weather. And there was a rainbow across the sky that stopped. And it stopped right over the area where they eventually found her the next day. The dispersed campgrounds are basically just open land where anybody can go and camp. And where their van was, uh, was basically alongside like a creek bed. And now it's just a little bit, you know, a few tributary streams running through, but obviously in the springtime with the snow melt, it's much, much larger. 
So you have to cross over this creek bed, this rock area, and go through these tributaries. And then once you get on the other side, it's just some trees, you know, sparsely placed throughout, and a lot of sagebrush, a lot of low brush. And it's actually on the borderline of the uh, Bridger Teton National Forest, and it was about maybe 40 feet away from where the Grand Teton National Park st starts. Uh, there was the remnants of a, a fire ring there and you can see where those rocks have been moved to make the fire ring. There was a clearing where I would assume, knowing I have a similar tent, where I would place my tent, and that opening would face out overlooking the, the mountain range. A lot of people go down to go by the creek and stuff like that, but not many people cross all the way over to go over there. It's definitely not an area that's heavily trafficked. And it wasn't until the day the sheriffs allowed us to go out to where they actually found her body and we wanted to go out there and we got flowers and I made the cross that was on the everybody saw in the news and as I started placing the rocks I looked up and a chipmunk came out of the, a hole right in front of me and sat at the edge of the cross and just sat there and didn't move while I placed all the stones and uh, laid the flowers and just sat there and watched me and I kind of went back and thought Maybe that was Gabby with me kind of walking, you know, a couple of days before. Maybe this is her back, you know, and it's just things like that that we've been seeing that it just reminds us of her. The house that we stayed at, there were these couple chipmunks running back and forth yeah, the whole time. The whole time. whole time. They'd come, they'd <laughs> stop, and sit there for a second, dart off again, you know, and they were just hanging out with us the whole time we were together. You know, it's so just little, little things like that. I guess there was some clothing that was identifying and stuff. And, they described a piece of clothing to me that matched um, one of her favorite sweatshirts that we knew was that we knew was hers. Mm -hmm. It was the exact spot that they found her. Yeah. So I laid the cross directly over where her torso uh, was, and I was told the direction in which her head was laying, and that's where I placed two flowers in the ground right there. He was found. I guess it would be in front of a tent, or if that's what was there, or just in front of the fire ring. There was definitely a fire ring there, mm -hmm. and she would have been right. And it wasn't right. far from the van, it was a um, five minute walk, you said, something like that. They found remains, and we knew it was Gabby, even though we were hoping it wasn't. So hard. It was the hardest thing I've ever had to listen to, and it, it didn't hit me right away and so for a few seconds. But I, I knew she was gone. As a mom, I knew she was gone. I didn't want to admit it, but I felt it the night I found out the van was in Florida on the 11th. I felt in my heart that she was gone. Mom and Dad have some new tattoos that resemble out of Gabby. Would you be willing to tell us about that? Yeah, these were tattoos that Gabby designed herself. She was an artist and um, I wanted to have her with me all the time. So we all I feel it. This helps we all put them. Thank you. Can you show us? Yeah. Wow. Gabby, good. Yeah. Can you show us again? It's all right, we do. Let, let it be. 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 And you said Gabby designed those. Gabby drew this one. Yeah. Listen, here, here's here's the end, all right. Okay. We need we need positive stuff to come from the tragedy that happened. Well, it's kind of like her slogan, you know. She's a big Beatles fan, and you know, she just she tried not to harp on things, you know, like, huh? I'd been overdoing it. You know, it was the '60s, and we were just getting crazed and stuff a lot of the time and so I went to bed and um, wasn't feeling too great inside my, in my in myself and in the dream my mother came in to me in the dream and she died um, maybe 10 years previously and so when someone who you've lost comes back to you in a dream it's a miraculous moment you know because you you're with them and you, your mind doesn't say, wait a minute, you shouldn't be here. You're just with them. And so it was really nice, you know, because there's my mom, and, oh, mom, you know, 
very emotional. And she seemed to realize, it was, this is all going on in my mind, of course, but you know, forget that. She seemed to realize that I was going through struggles. And she said, it's going to be okay. It's all really going to be okay. And she said, just, just let it be. I went, ah, I felt great and woke up and thought, what was that? What? And I remembered the dream. So, what did she say? Let it be. And then I sat down at the piano and wrote the song. It had a lot of emotion because of who'd said it and my situation. So that kind of translated to the record. And I think that's why a lot of people like it. They, they feel somehow that kind of magic comes through. That's exactly where she had it on her. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I that's where so. she had all it. All of them are were her tattoos. Uh -huh. You know, she kind of designed like the little wave and the uh, the triangle with the flowers. flowers. That, that, yeah, that, that, that the one right here. Uh -huh. Yeah, she d she had this one on her and she designed this one. Okay. She was an amazing artist. Drew she drew it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, <laughs> she drew it. She drew it. She wanted something. She wanted to start getting arm tattoos. So she sat and she just doodled and until she found something she liked and. I said, that's the one, that's pretty, and she got it. She actually, <laughs> before she left on her trip, uh, bought a, a tattoo machine. I bought her a tattoo we, we, machine. We bought it for her. <laughs> and I wasn't too quick to let her try on me, but I, our son was like, yeah, go for it. And he actually got a tattoo. He's 18. He's 18. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, so it was his like, graduation mm -hmm. present from his sister. And he, he likes to camp and hike and stuff. And, and so she put a, a little tattoo on his leg with mountains and a tent. and. It's something for him to always have. Basically, for his sister. like her last piece of artwork, and he has it on his body. Yeah. So. Oh, literally on his body. Yeah. 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 And he'll never touch that. I mean, I got I got the one on the hand because apparently I talk a lot with my hand, you know, and uh, just I see it and just keep thinking of her, you know. So this is the one that she had right where she had it. LA now. Here is JB Buno. Partial human remains found here in the search area for Brian Laundry. A senior law enforcement official telling NBC News that what appears to be partial human remains have been found at the Carlton Reserve in an area that was previously underwater. The remains were found near a backpack consistent with items that Brian Laundry may have used again this break Brian Laundry's body has been found the discovery follows weeks of speculation about the 23 year old's whereabouts also breaking tonight the FBI says that the skeletal remains found in a nature preserve in Florida on Wednesday are in fact those of Brian Laundry law enforcement had considered Laundry the only person of interest in the murder of his fiance Gabby Petito the discovery comes one day after a stunning update from the FBI which held a press conference outside of this Florida Nature Preserve. Investigators found what appears to be human remains along with personal items such as a backpack and notebook belonging to Brian Laundry. She always had those blue eyes, right? Those, those ridiculous blue eyes. You couldn't keep her in trouble. Like, you would ground her, and she'd start crying. She always wanted to go out and do stuff, whether it was scuba diving or 
hiking the Appalachian Trail, surfing sand dunes in Colorado. Gabby is the most amazing person I've ever met. So if you're gonna leave here today, I'm asking that you guys to be inspired by the way she treated people. All people. Love knows no bounds. She didn't care. She genuinely loved people. It didn't matter. So when you leave here today, be inspired by what she brought to you. Because the entire planet knows this woman.